In our discussion on spherical mirrors, we mentioned two types of spherical mirrors. So we spoke about concave mirrors and we also mentioned convex mirrors. So in this lecture, we're going to examine convex mirrors in more detail and we're going to examine image formation using convex mirrors. So before we examine the ways that images are formed using convex mirrors, let's recall what a convex mirror is. A convex mirror is defined in the following way. A convex mirror is one type of a spherical mirror in which the rays of light are reflected off of the outer surface of our mirror and the center of the mirror bulges or bends towards our viewer and this can be seen by looking at the following diagram. So let's suppose that the viewer as described by the following eye is found on the left side of our mirror. So what makes this mirror a convex mirror is the following two things. Firstly, when the rays of light bounce off or reflect off of our mirror, they reflect off of the outer surface of the mirror. So that means our metallic reflective coating is found on the outer surface of the mirror and not the inner surface. And secondly, what makes this mirror a convex mirror is the fact that the center bulges toward the viewer as seen in the following diagram. Diagram. So, let's begin our discussion of image formation of convex mirrors and let's discuss when objects are found an infinite distance away of our from our convex mirror. So let's suppose we have the, con the following convex mirror and this line represents the principal axis. The principal axis is essentially a straight line that passes through the center of our mirror and also through the focus of our mirror. So for a convex mirror, the focus is found on the right side of our mirror. So because the object is found an infinite distance away to the left of our convex mirror, that basically means the rays of light are coming in from an infinite distance away. So as they come in, they're parallel with respect to the principal axis. And that means means all these rays of light will essentially intersect at the focus of our mirror as shown in the following diagram. So let's describe what exactly is taking place. Let's assume that our viewer, the eye, is found on the left side of our convex mirror. So when our rays of light travel and reflect off of our surface, eventually those rays of light will reflect and reach the eye. Now the eye essentially transforms those light signals into electrical signals that eventually reach the human brain. And what the brain does, it essentially interprets these rays of light as if they're coming from the following location, as if they're traveling straight paths. And that will essentially mean that the brain will interpret an image that will be a virtual image that will be found on the right side of our uh, convex mirror exactly at the focus. So for, th for this particular case, our image will be found at the focus. So once again, when the object is infinitely far away and the light rays are all parallel with respect to the principal axis, a virtual image will be formed at the focus that is behind the mirror to the right side of our mirror. In other words, even though the light rays will bounce off the convex mirror, the brain will interpret the reflected rays as having traveled straight paths 
as shown by the following dashed orange lines. So now let's move on to the following case in which our object is now found near our mirror as shown in the following diagram. Let's suppose our object is right side up and it's shown by the following purple arrow. So it's found very close to our convex mirror. So once again, the viewer is found on the left side, the focus is on the right side, and the radius of curvature given by point C is also found on the right side. Now, to determine where the image is formed, we must draw the ray diagram as discussed in lecture on the ray diagrams for concave mirrors. So in the same way that we were able to use ray diagrams to find the location of our image for concave mirrors, we can use the same ray diagrams for convex mirrors. So, notice we have the following two ray or the following two light rays. So the first light ray is essentially traveling parallel with respect to our principal axis. So it reflects off of the object it travels parallel with respect to our principal axis, it bounces off, and this dashed line will go directly through our focus. Now, the third ray of light travels in the following direction, essentially directly to our point. This is our radius of curvature. So this distance is the radius of curvature. Now notice, the ray of light will reflect and travel directly directly opposite as initially, but this dashed line will be followed directly through our radius of curvature point. So once again, the rays do not actually pass through the points F and C. These dashed lines are not actually rays of light. However, our brain interprets that these rays do in fact travel in the pathway as described by the following orange arrow. So that means at the location, at the position where our dashed arrows intersect is the location of our image. So this red arrow represents our image. Now, in the same way that we were able to derive the mirror equation and the lateral magnification for concave mirrors, we can also derive and use those same equations for convex mirrors. So, the mirror equation is seen by the following formula. 1 divided by the focal length, f, is equal to 1 divided by the image distance, di, plus 1 divided by do, our object distance. And the magnification equation is given by the following formula. hi divided by ho, the image height divided by the object height is equal to negative of the image distance divided by the object distance. Now, Whenever we're dealing with convex mirror, it's important to know the sign convention. So when exactly do we use a negative and when exactly do we use a positive? So as it turns out, HI, the image height, is always positive if the image is always upright and it's negative if the image is inverted. Now, for the case of convex mirrors, it turns out that the image is always a virtual image and it's always an upright image. So that basically implies that for convex mirrors, our image height will always be positive, the focal length will always be negative, the radius of curvature will always be negative, and the image distance will always be negative. So once again, no matter where we place the object to the left of our convex mirror, the image will always be virtual and upright. That means that the image always appears behind the mirror to the right of our mirror. So once again, the focal length L or the focal length F 
the radius of curvature r and the image distance di are always negative for convex mirrors and hi, the image height, is always positive because our image is always upright and found on this side of our mirror.